In today's video, I'm going to be sharing two really easy meal ideas with you. Smothered pork steaks with green beans and potatoes and roasted chicken with vegetables. Let's get started. So to season the pork steaks, you need one tablespoon of garlic salt, a little bit of pepper, half a tablespoon of granulated chicken bouillon, and less than half a tablespoon of smoked paprika. So before you season your pork steaks, you can go ahead and heat some oil in your oven safe skillet. And then just go ahead and rub on that seasoning. And I also added a little bit of Cajun Redhead, which, which is just a Cajun blend of seasoning. You can use whatever you want. I just added a little more for some extra spice. After your steaks have browned on both sides, you can go ahead and add a splash of chicken broth. Save the rest of it because we'll use it in the green beans later. And now I'm just adding a small little teaspoon of this Better Than Bouillon roasted garlic paste. It's really good and adds a lot of flavor. And then I also added some browning seasoning uh, or some browning sauce. A little bit on both sides of the pan and that also adds flavor and color. Bring it to a boil and then you can crack a little bit of pepper over the top of those onions. Turn off your heat and you can cover it with either a lid or some foil and then put it in the oven at 350 for about one to two hours. I only did one hour this time and they came out great. Just remember to look at it every now and then and make sure all of your liquid isn't cooking out. If it does start to cook out, you can add some broth or water, um, just a little bit at a time, not too much. For a side dish, I cooked down some fresh green beans and about three tablespoons of butter and some chicken broth. I also added some little yellow potatoes and seasoned it with Greek seasoning. So I forgot to film the part where I took the aluminum foil off for the last 10 minutes and I added just a little bit more chicken broth. So 
So you know it's perfectly done whenever you can just push down on the steaks and the meat is just falling off the bones. This was seriously so good. It's one of my favorite things to make and it's really, really easy. So now I'm just cutting off some Italian oregano for my roasted chicken. I love having these little windowsill herbs. You also need two large carrots, one lemon, 10 to 12 little potatoes, three stalks of celery, a whole head of garlic, and one onion. Then you wanna go ahead and just get started chopping up all of those vegetables. And what I'm gonna do is make a bed for the chicken to lay on with the onions, the garlic, and the lemon. And then I'm gonna put the carrots and potatoes all around the edges of the pan. The key to a really good roasted chicken is a good um, roasting pan. I got this from Target. I think it was somewhere around like $40, but it's a really good investment because it really makes a big difference in how your chicken cooks. So it's not really necessary to get all the peelings off of the garlic, but I just tried to get most of it off. Um, it's not like we're going to be eating the garlic, it's just in there for flavor. So before you season your chicken, you want to make sure it's really dry, so just get some paper towels and pat it down. So I rub my chicken down with some seasoned softened butter. Um, the butter wasn't as soft as I wanted it to be, so I went ahead and put it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. So now I'm going to mix my seasonings into the butter using Montreal chicken seasoning, um, some more of that chicken bouillon powder, Tony sachets, and some garlic salt. So you definitely want to get that butter rub under the skin. So go ahead and just stick your fingers under there and kind of break it up a little bit. I really had to worm my way in there. This chicken had some tough skin. So I like the softened butter better than just pouring melted butter over the top because what the melted butter is going to do is just run right off the chicken but this um, softened butter 
sticks to the chicken and then when it starts to cook it just goes into the chicken and so I'm also going to season the top um, the skin with some Montreal chicken seasoning and some smoked paprika and then just rub it down Now I'm just wiping off any butter I got on the sides of the pan so that it doesn't burn. Then you can go ahead and pop it in the oven at 425 for about an hour and 20 to an hour and 30 minutes. I think I ended up leaving mine in for an hour and 30 minutes. So there was 18 minutes left on the clock and I just wanted to check it. You can tell if it's done when you poke it with a knife between the leg and the thigh. If you see blood, obviously it's not done, but if the juices run clear, then it is done. Um, when I pulled it out like this, I went ahead and added some olive oil to the vegetables so that they could roast a little bit better. Now this was about 30 minutes later and you can see the juices are running clear and it was ready to be taken out of the oven. When it's done, go ahead and remove the chicken from the pan and stir your vegetables around a little bit. I put my pan back in the oven and broiled the vegetables for about 15 minutes just so they could get a little bit crispier. Then you want to go ahead and cover your chicken with foil for about 15 to 20 minutes. Um, if you start cutting at it right away, all the juices are going to run out and you're going to end up with dry chicken. So after you let your chicken sit, you can go ahead and start cutting it up and getting it ready to serve. Um, don't judge my skills with a knife. If you're looking for somebody to teach you how to cut a chicken the right way, um, just look that up. It'll be a totally different video. That is not me. Um, but you do want to cut it into bigger chunks because the smaller pieces that you cut will dry out. So try to cut it in big pieces. Do y'all see all that juice? My mouth is literally watering as I'm watching this video back. That chicken was so good and it was even better the next day. Um, if you have any leftovers, you can put them in a Tupperware container. Make sure you get all the juices and it just marinates overnight in the juices and it's so good the next day too. And that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.